So we're here with my mother, Nito Higgins, and she is a special education teacher in the Leon Springs area, and she's here today to tell us a little bit about how the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the education field. So, Mom, Nita, can you start by telling us a little about yourself and your current career? Um, I'm a special education teacher, and I have taught for 24 years, and all those years have been as a special education teacher in elementary, um, all grades, kinder through fifth. Awesome. So, when the COVID-19 pandemic first began, how did it impact you compared to now, and has there been any changes? Um, when it first impact or first happened, uh, I would say our education field wasn't prepared, um, nor were our students to know how to navigate all the online information. Um, and as an educator, there was a lot of learning I had to do, um, a lot of training on how to access different programs and different online um, services that we could provide our students. And then also, as a special education teacher, I had to also go above and beyond to figure out, okay, well now how can I get that to add oral administration so that my students who can't read can have it read to them on the computer and different things like that. Um, how is it today? It has gotten a lot better. Um, we have it down a lot um, more organized, a lot more efficient, and allow uh, the programs allow for the accommodations that my students need. And um, we've figured out how to embed those things for them so that um, they can still access the curriculum just like everyone else. But um, it, it was a, a huge learning curve. Oh, okay, well, thank you. How did the pandemic impact your position specifically within special education and which positions within education do you feel were impacted the most? Um, honestly, I really believe the more severe students that, ha I mean, have more severe special needs were impacted the most um, because they really need hands-on, one-on-one or one-on-one -on -one interactions. Uh, learning on the computer does not uh, really, um, it's not a good avenue for them and it wasn't really for their learning style. They really needed hands-on material. They needed the, the live interaction with a, an adult and peers too and role models for some of the more severe special education students. So during the pandemic, how have policymakers impacted the education field regarding regulations and rules, that sort of thing? Um, well, uh, for one, uh, one big rule that uh, a regulation that got changed was we did not have to administer the STAR test this year for students, um, which was a very a very wise decision of the state of Texas, I think, because it was very difficult for students to go from in class all of a sudden to online learning. Um, and so they really, I feel their education was impacted uh, in a negative way. Um, I do also see one big rule that I, um, that we are using right now as far as funding our students. Um, we get funded based on their attendance. And so we have some students that still are online only, and sometimes they only show up for five to 10 minutes, but we have to count them as present for the day. So it looks like they're present, present and in school when they're not in school the whole day and they're not learning the whole day and they're missing out on different skills and different um, techniques that we're trying to teach them. And so um, that rule, I guess, would be something that is definitely a change. Wow, that's really interesting. I didn't know that. Um, so for you specifically, what has made 
your life most difficult throughout this pandemic when ed within the education field? Um, most difficult is not being able to really assess how my students are really learning because I'm not getting that immediate feedback and I'm not being able to provide that immediate feedback to them as well. Whereas I, in the past, I could say, oh, I could see he's really not getting this, so let me try it this way. Whereas now if it's online learning and we do have some in-person students and some online, um, we're just, it's, there's a, a delay and there's a, a lack of understanding if they really are getting that skill or not. Also, we do have some parents that um, do help our students greatly. So it appears that our students are really getting that skill. And then when it goes time to, to test or something else that um, when we have their assignments and their parents aren't able to help them, um, we're seeing a great difference in the quality of work mm -hmm. uh, because what sometimes they're turning in looks um, very, it looks like they're getting the skill. It looks like they have great understanding. When in reality, it's the parents. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Very interesting. So looking to the future, how do you think this will continue to play out for your specific career, the COVID pandemic in the future? Well, we have to come to a balance uh, for these students to continue learning. Um, I think the future is maybe a combination of both. Um, and, and it has gotten better, but we, we're not reaching all the kids all the time when there's kids that are logging off and not getting the education, um, that's, that's a difficult thing. Um, and parents aren't often able to monitor what's really going on and, and in the real moment time because they're busy on their devices or they're in meetings and um, are doing things. We have some students that go to their parents' work with them now and um, some that, um, actually sit in a restaurant all day long and um, I think that's just really impacting their their education it's it's not the same setting that they really need to be fully engaged and fully um, focused on on learning these skills mm. so based on all of that in regards to the education industry in general in a broad sense What's been your biggest takeaway from the pandemic moving on? Biggest takeaway? My biggest takeaway is that um, students really need in-person learning at a younger age. I, I can see as, an, as you get older or if you don't have a disability, Online learning is probably an okay avenue for you, but the elementary students and the kindergartners that I work with, um, they're, they're not making the gains they should be making like they would be if they were in person. So um, I really feel like that um, for our special education students and our younger elementary kids, they really need the in-person learning. So I would hope that that would be something we would, for the future, continue to try to really have available. Okay, great. Well, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. I really appreciate it. Thank you for asking me. <laughs>